Yo book nerds, I read Gun Island by Amitav Gosh. I read this one for school for my summer classes. Check out my grad school updates if you want information about all that if you are new here. It was a crazy summer. But I read this in summer. I do not remember what month. June? Maybe July? I don't remember. But I read it over the summer. I loved this book, honestly. I do not think this book is going to be for everyone but I really liked it. <laughs> so this book is very complicated to talk about. It is, it's got a lot of layers to it. The main themes that I would pick out from this book are that this book is about climate change, it's about human trafficking, it's about similarities between refugees and animals and like animals losing their homes and habitats because of deforestation and stuff like that and then refugees needing to leave their homes and these animals are leaving their homes it's like so hard to like pin it down to what this is about but it was done really well i really enjoyed reading this book so dean is our main character and dean is a book dealer he is a seller of antique and rare books and so like right off the bat i liked dean because you know i love books so i'm gonna love dean right and so it was a lot of fun like having that as your protagonist so dean i'm trying to refresh my memory because it's been a while since i read this but i believe dean lives in calcutta yeah i believe so calcutta or he did he lives somewhere by calcutta <laughs> he actually does move to america but he like was born and raised in calcutta i believe i'm sorry that the details are kind of fuzzy but it has been months and i wish i would have recorded this sooner but I've, it's been crazy but anyway so he does end up moving to the U.S. because of his job as a book dealer, but he is from Calcutta and has lots of ties there. And a lot of the book revolves around some legends from his home area. And so like there is this legend about this goddess, Manasa Devi, and I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but Manasa Devi is the goddess of snakes. And so like the snake goddess is a recurring image throughout this entire book. And so it's like very, very important. And so obviously the title of this is Gun Island. So like immediately you think it's gonna be about guns, but it like guns are mentioned, but it's not the main thing, like at all, like at all. So it's kind of like misleading. Personally, this book is about guns, uh, snakes, and books. So like, I actually like all those things. So it was perfect combination for me. <laughs> but <laughs> like off the bat, though, it is not really about guns. There is a legend in relation to Manasseh Devi about this gun merchant. And Dean is trying to find this lost legend about this gun merchant. And so he's doing all this research, trying to figure out who this was and how it related to Manasseh Devi. I hope I am explaining this coherently. I'm sorry if I'm not, I'm trying really hard. But basically, yeah, Dean finds out that there is a legend that was lost, that was passed down orally. And so he's trying to figure out who this merchant, apparently a gun merchant, was and how it relates to Manasseh Devi because he's very familiar and very interested in Manasseh Devi. And he, there's some heavy foreshadowing because he says every time Manasseh Devi comes up in his life, his life goes into turmoil. So like right off the bat, we know, okay, he's diving into this legend again. And he says his life has always been in turmoil when he's been diving into this legend. So we can assume his life's going to go crazy again. And it does. Like reading this, one of the questions that popped into my mind is what is more dangerous, a gun or a book? And so like books are powerful. Obviously guns are powerful too, but they're powerful in different ways. And like knowledge and education and stories 
are so powerful. And so like, that was something that just kind of stuck in my head as I was reading this. I'm going to read you a quote that was at the beginning of the book that kind of sets the tone for this story. So he's talking about this story of Manasseh Devi, but it kind of applies to other stories as well. He says, I don't remember when I first heard the story or who told it to me, but constant repetition ensured that it sank so deep into my consciousness that I wasn't even aware that it was there. But some stories, like certain life forms, possess a special streak of vitality that allow them to outlive others of their kind. And since the story of the merchant and Manasseh Devi is very old, it must, I suppose, possess enough of this quality to ensure that it can survive extended periods of dormancy. So basically he's saying that like books and stories have lives of their own and they get passed down and they survive the test of time. That's the reason why I love classics so much. They survive the test of time. And so I just think that that's a beautiful quote. Like this story has been in his life and it's been kind of in the background. Like he doesn't even like remember it sometimes, but then when it does, it has such an impact on him. And stories do have impacts on us, like really hard. And so I just love that quote. So I'm going to talk about the book. If you don't want to know any more than what I've told you, here's your spoiler alert, but I want to dive into a couple things here. So Dean is going on this big adventure basically to try and figure out the story of the gun merchant and how it relates to Manasseh Devi because he's kind of obsessed with that goddess and her story. So he sets out and along the way he meets with old friends, makes new friends, and he's discovering bits and pieces of this story about this merchant and this merchant's travels. And he inadvertently is kind of going on the same journey as the merchant himself. So there's this like level of is Dean the new gun merchant because he's kind of traveling in the same way that the gun merchant traveled. There's these two other characters named Tipu and Rafi who are also traveling some of the roads that the gun merchant has traveled. And so like between Dean, Rafi, and Tipu, like they're kind of recreating the gun merchant story, which is really, really cool. So you have the story that we're unraveling that happened who knows when, like way in the past. And then we have like a present day recreation of it. And all the while th that um, Dean is going on his journey, like he's literally going from the United States back to Calcutta. And then he ends up traveling to Italy and Tipu and Rafi are traveling as well through Egypt and heading towards Italy. So like there, there's a lot going on here. There's lots of travel. And while all this is happening, there is a lot of environmental things happening that are odd. So like there are cyclones. We learn about ocean dead zones, chemical runoff, like dumping in rivers and killing animals. Like we are learning about all this stuff and then we see it happen as well on their journeys. So somehow this story feels very tied to environmental changes and environmental issues. It was interesting when I read this because I, I read this in the summer and the Canadian wildfires were going crazy. So like I was thinking about that like the entire time I was reading this book. Side note, at least I believe the fires are done now, thankfully. I believe they've been done now. But when I was reading this, they were still raging like crazy. I'm going to share another quote here. This is from a friend of Dean's. Her name is Sinta. She is like my favorite character in this entire book. And she says, you mustn't underestimate the power of stories. There is something in them that is elemental and inexplicable. Haven't you heard it said that what makes us human, what separates us from animals, is the faculty of storytelling? I think that is beautiful. Stories and ideas, they do. They make us human. They they inspire us. I just, I love that quote. And Cinta is a friend of Dean's and she lives in Italy and she knows a lot 
like she's very very educated and so Dean and her are friends and they like she's very interested in his travels and finding out more about this gun merchant that story that he is working on right now and so she's like very obsessed with his work and she she loves to like contradict Dean like in a healthy way like Dean is kind of a passive kind of a negative person sometimes and Cinta is like out there and she's like no we got this like we can do this and we're gonna figure it out and I know people and she's just very upbeat and happy and just I love her <laughs> I feel like Cinta makes Dean broaden his mind and I yeah I just love her so the other side of the story we've got Dean chasing this legend but then we do have all these environmental things happening at the same time and so we actually are seeing like environmental changes which is killing habitat and animals and these animals are having to find new habitat and then at the same time there's a lot of conflict right now with um within the area within some governments and so there are refugees trying to get out of the countries and find a safer place to live and so there's a lot of comparisons between the movement of animals and the movement of people and there's a lot of dangerous things talked about with refugees like how refugees can be like taken and if they don't pay certain amounts they might have their organs taken from them and like it's like scary stuff that these refugees go through to try to get to safety and it's like crazy that they would risk things like that like that's how bad it must be where they live that they're risking like kidnapping and losing their organs to try and get out like that's a very very horrifying situation and so like Dean is seeing these things happening and he's like is this just a coincidence is this happening because I'm trying to find out this story in relation to this goddess like is is the world acting against me like there's some paranormal stuff going on and so like Dean is wrestling with that like like he believes in facts he believes in like he, he doesn't he's not a religious person really so like like he's like arguing with himself throughout this narrative he says like that he has faith in chance and so like he keeps trying to convince himself that these are all just coincidences that he keeps seeing this weird stuff happen and is it i don't know like there's an argument to be made on both sides of this like is something more going on or is this naturally what is occurring because of the way the world is changing so yeah it's very very interesting it adds to like, is this gun merchant story real or is it, is it a legend? Is, are these events coincidences or is something supernatural happening? Like there's just so many layers to this and I hope I'm explaining it well because it was so like, it was so intertwined and done really well. I really enjoyed it and I, I, it wasn't confusing. Like, I, I feel like I'm making it sound confusing. So all throughout this book, I've been giving you quotes like that they talk about stories. I'm gonna give you another quote about stories. Ah, it says right here that Dean is Bengali. So um, yeah, Dean is talking to someone else that is Bengali and he said, and the other man says, you like stories, eh? Yes, I do, Dean says. And the guy goes, be careful. Sometimes stories can be dangerous. And Dean has been chasing this story, which has been like having him witness all these like environmental catastrophes pretty much. And so is this one of the dangerous stories that this man is talking about? Should he be chasing this story? It's, I loved it. It is so, so good the way this is written. That quote just adds to the like foreshadowing and, and I just, I love it. So one of the issues that I had with this book, there is a girl named Pia and Pia is Indian. I looked it up, is an, is an Indian name for beloved. And of course, 
she's the love interest. Dean like falls head over heels in love with her. And I, I did not really buy their relationship. I, I don't like Pia very much. She's okay. She's okay. I just, I don't think that this story needed romance, to be honest. So that was like my one issue with this. There was enough going on. We didn't need him falling in love with Pia. I honestly think Dean had more chemistry with Cinta, but Cinta is a lot older than him. So I see why there was no romantic relationship that developed there, but I would have rather him had ended up with Cinta than with Pia. I just, I didn't really like Pia and I don't know what Dean saw in her, to be honest. It just felt like he saw her, thought she was pretty and that was it. Like he didn't go past that. I don't know. I just feel like they're two different people to like, I didn't like it. I didn't like their relationship. So I'm giving you another spoiler here because this is kind of where I'm ending on this story, but I want to talk about it. So spoiler warning, because I'm going to talk about the ending. I'm kind of talking about the beginning too. So at towards the beginning of this book, Dean visits a shrine to Manasseh Devi, the snake goddess. And Eventually, this shrine gets destroyed and washed away by floodwaters. And so, this whole book makes me end with this thought, like, okay, the shrine has been destroyed, and all this crazy stuff has been happening ever since it was destroyed. Like, are we supposed to rebuild this shrine? Like, are we supposed to learn from these crazy environmental issues that are happening and now we need to go rebuild the shrine, turn back time, stop this from happening. Like, I don't know if I'm reaching or what, but like, we don't rebuild the shrine in the book. And I feel like the shrine, in some sense of the word, like needs to be rebuilt. We need to be making environmental changes and trying to fix this. This shrine, we do find out, was built supposedly by the gun merchant. And so it's wiped out. Then if Dean or Tipo or Rafi is the new gun merchant, if we just went on this journey with them, are we the new gun merchant? Do we need to go rebuild this shrine? Like, that's the end of the story originally. If we're reliving that story, do we need to rebuild the shrine in some way? That's my question. There are a lot of plot conveniences in this, but it's kind of the point. Like, it adds to Dean's, like, wonderings if this is all paranormal stuff or if it's all coincidence. So, like, there are plot conveniences. So, like, sometimes I didn't like that, but overall, like, I did really, really like this book. There's a lot of linguistic wordplay, which, as an English nerd I loved. So I really enjoyed this book, but I understand that this will not be everyone's cup of tea. If you aren't into like linguistics, the roots of words, where things come from, histories of languages, histories of stories, you're not gonna probably like this book. It's gonna be too much for you. If you don't believe in climate change, this probably won't be the book for you either, but yeah, I just, I loved this. I thought it was great, except for Dean's little romance. But overall, I really liked this book. So if you've read Gun Island, let me know what you think of it and we'll chat in the comments. That's all I have for you this week. I'll see you guys next Monday. Hit like and subscribe and thanks for talking books with me.